Fiancé secretly invited his ex to our wedding. Then I found out he used five bogus social media accounts to stalk her. She was obsessed with maintaining her purity. After rejecting him, 23rd I am getting married in January. I just found out that my fiancé, Mark 25M fake name, invited his previous predicament to our wedding, without asking me for context. I met Mark on a dating app two years ago, after he ended a romance. To be honest, it's really puzzling what he and Tracy 22F had they met through a mutual friend. They began to develop affections for one other. Mark told me that they never dated and slept together. However, it was more than friendship. He still keeps her love letters, presents, and talks about her. Tracy and him. Attempted to keep in contact after the breakup staying friends, although she ghosted him after discovering we started dating from what I observed on her social media. She is currently in a relationship, so I am not concerned about her wanting to get with my fiancé. They haven't been in contact for two years, but he still has her number and email. I found out about his invitation to her when I checked. Again, our guest list, and discovering her name, I understand Tracy is not a danger to our relationship. But Mark invited her behind my back. Makes me feel awful about our entire wedding. He assured me he has no feelings for her. However, he made sure to send her an invitation. This is probably me feeling insecure, but my fear is that he will not get over her, stealthily sneaking into my heart. I don't want to lose him comments where the op has replied. Commenter one is probably not over her, especially because they were never his thing. She might be the one that got away. If I were awake, I would have a very serious conversation with him. I don't understand why he is not over her especially if they never existed. Based on what Mark told me, he was the one who did not desire a relationship. Tracy just begun life. Commenter also went behind your back to invite someone whose love letters he has kept. The fact that he did not discuss it with you is if her presence is more essential to him than you. Being comfortable at your own wedding, then you may need to postpone the wedding. She might not pose a threat to your relationship, but it sounds like your fiancé's feelings pose a threat. I'm not sure why he isn't over her, even after two years of no touch. I understand Tracy is part of his past, his narrative, but it's been so long. Comment or three. Tell him you don't want her there. And that is final, and he better rescind it. Otherwise, you'll have to reconsider the marriage. Starting a married life by going behind your back is a no. No, actually. You should not stubbornly hang on to someone you cannot trust, and you cannot trust someone who does shit behind your back. Oop, her attending the wedding does not make me uneasy. I know she won't do anything. The issue is with my fiancé. Also, he invited her to the wedding. Without informing me if Mark wanted her there, fine. But I resent that he didn't tell me ahead. And it is making me think. He lied about being over her. Commenter 4. Why do you constantly saying, I understand she won't do anything? If you don't trust him not to do anything with an old fling, you should not get married. Tracy has a boyfriend and is expecting. She was the one blocking him everywhere. After discovering that we were dating Update 1, October 19th, 2024. After reading the comments and chatting with some friends, my heart finally understood. Mark never truly got over Tracy. Initially, I was in denial, but I went out with Tom, 24 million, his best friend for years to comprehend what really happened between them. Based on what he told me, Tracy and Mark met because they had acquaintances in common. She had just gotten into university and was 17 at the time. While Mark was almost graduating, they remained friends for two years, and feelings began to grow. Mark was already working when she was still in college. He merely wanted to formally date her. After her graduation, it was never a thing, even though they exchanged love letters, gifts, and spent practically every holiday together. Tom told me everyone in their former friend group believed they would marry. They were really sweet together, so their breakup was very unpredictable. Tracy broke up with Mark because their religious ideals do not align. She intended to conserve herself until marriage. In the end, they thought it was best to part ways, and perhaps try again after a few years. But after Mark and I started dating, Tracy recognized that it was useless to wait for him, and started seeing other folks as well. 
so she blocked everything but emails, just to have a clean start. Eventually, I recognized Mark is only hoping Tracy will come back to him, due to their discussions about trying again. After a while, it actually hurt so much, as I loved him so much. I still didn't confront him because I'm still shaken up, but I'm not sure if this marriage will happen. I'll update once I calm down and approach him. Update 2, October 25th, 2024. It has been a while since the last update, and I'm here to announce. The wedding has been called off. My folks are the ones canceling everything. For me, it's like returning to my childhood, when my parents had to solve my difficulties. I confronted Mark after speaking with Tom. I informed him of what I had been dealing with. His reply at first was contemptuous. It was almost like he was attempting to escape from the circumstance. In the end, Mark stated that he had never loved someone like Tracy, because it was pure and innocent. She reminded him that not everything is about sexual desire. Throughout the darkest days of his life, Tracy was like the sunlight. Hear the man you love. Expressing how much he loved another lady is quite hurtful during the conversation. I started crying, bawling my eyes out. Mark has the audacity to admit he loves me, but it's a different type of love. I questioned why he invited her to our wedding, and he was speechless why. He had to throw away our future for anything from the past. This hurts so much. Mark told me he knew Tracy had not banned him on email since he was the one who helped her acquire her first job. There was a lot of professional stuff involved as well. This is how he managed to send her our wedding invitation. However, he didn't mean any harm when I inquired what he meant by this. Mark merely said he wanted her to watch us together and comprehend what she has lost because he was devastated over Tracy's pregnancy, not married. The moment Mark mentioned Tracy's pregnancy, a red alarm began to sound in my thoughts. How did you learn about her pregnancy? You claimed she blocked you everywhere. I saw worry in his eyes as he began to stutter. In the end, I forced him give me his phone, and I discovered more than five accounts to stalk Tracy. My stomach felt ill. The want to vomit was overwhelming. In the end, I chose to cancel the engagement. Since he was creepy, Mark threw himself on the floor, praying for forgiveness. And he loves me, just in a different way than Tracy, and was simply hurt because she gave herself to another man. He asked her for sex innumerable times. This made me more disgusted with him. He felt entitled to her virginity and body. I fled without even carrying a bag. Everything is simply too much. I cannot believe I spent two years admiring a stalker. A male child, oh. I also told Tracy everything, even his accounts. I'm not sure if she saw my messages, but I hope she does. The jealousy I once felt for her turned into sympathy. No woman should go through what Mark has done. Mark wants to meet up with me, doesn't want to split up, but I'm just so exhausted. Update 3, October 26th. 2024. I believe this is my last update. I've already met with Tracy, talked about what happened. I met her at a cafe, and in the beginning I was so nervous. I didn't know what her reaction was, because her response was merely high. Let's discuss over a cup of coffee. While I was waiting for her, I felt my back sweating, and overall, Tracy arrived full with emotion, and I finally understood. Why was Mark so smitten with her, as she is definitely one of the most stunning women I've seen? She's lovely in images, but personally, she looks better. Tracy said hello to me, and asked if I would be willing to go to her place to chat, since being outside for too long. It makes her very fatigued. We got some coffee to go, and it was... rather weird. So, let's speak about what she told me. First of all, she apologized for being the cause that I am now single. I assured her it was not her fault. Tracy stated she received the invitation, but it was merely not interested in participating in our wedding. She was already in a great relationship. It is meaningless to see someone from the past. With the tale Tom and Mark told me, I became inquisitive and inquired about their staying friends, as it sounded like she wanted to stay with him after their separation. And... It is the polar opposite of her behavior. Tracy felt really uncomfortable with this question. 
but nonetheless. Explain to me why she stated that at the beginning. She was truly in love with Mark, because he was her first love. She described him as a protector, someone trustworthy, handsome, and friendly as he always showered her with gifts and travels. Everything was fine and sweet, but with time, Mark began to ask her for sex, so much so that she pretended to be unwell, just to avoid him. She just didn't want to sleep with him, and had some form of impediment. It was like a sixth feeling telling her not to do this. She was sick and tired of all this, and used the fact that her parents are very religious. To justify why sex was off the charts, this led to a quarrel which Mark never told me about, and them splitting up only two weeks after they started talking again. As she felt in debt to him, he helped her find a position in a famous company. He spent a lot of money on her through travels, foods, and gifts. One of the presents was a Rolex for her 18th birthday. This got me mad. He has never spent so much money on me. Tracy found out. Me and Mark were seeing each other. She felt relieved and finally had a valid reason to block him everywhere. While he was still sometimes alluding at them sleeping together, in the end, I told her throughout our relationship. Mark would occasionally chat about her, and at first it seemed kind of bizarre, but I brushed it off because she was part of a story. Oh, I also discussed Mark's multiple accounts. Initially, she did not trust me, but I showed her the accounts that I know. This was creepy because they all had female names. Followers and photographs all appeared to be authentic. Her account is public. I requested Tracy to make it secret. She created a new account using her Korean name and deactivated the older one. We had fun and became friends. She is a very sweet lady. I witnessed how her lover treated her like a queen. I'm glad she found love and let go of Mark. Comments where Op has responded. Commenter one sounds like everyone dodged a bullet. That was Mark. Oop. It was not a bullet. It was a nuclear bomb. Commenter two. I truly hope she takes Mark's stalking seriously. It's quite disturbing what he has been doing. I am honestly worried for this woman. He became fanatical. It can't lead to anything nice, especially if he begins spiraling following your separation. Comment or three? I'm pleased you told her. Pregnant women with psychotic stalkers are slain. At an alarming rate, I cannot image how embarrassing and terrible and challenging the entire thing. The talk must have been for you. I'm incredibly proud of you for talking with her, showing her all of their accounts so she could protect herself. We now have all of the information, at least whatever else she decides to do, and anything else happens. You know, you've done everything you could to protect someone, a vulnerable woman. That tells volumes about character and personality and general grace slash class overall. You will discover someone fantastic who genuinely loves you and matches your positive attitude, dignified. Use your character-driven attitude to its full potential. Smile, I just know it. I hope you'll post an update in three years. Madly, adore, and enormously successful smile. Next story, husband. And I agreed to have a threesome with our pal. During that, he became jealous and walked out. Because I was having too much fun, my hubby and I have been together eight years. We have been married for three years and enjoy an active sexual life. They had a really nice romantic relationship. Over the last month and a half, we've been discussing about opening the relationship, being able to share experiences I only know him, and he's had other experiences. We have extremely close buddies who have open relationships during their entire friendship. We're talking about doing something together. With our female friend, we have spent a very long time discussing how we just want this to be tangible. Instead of being emotional, we established norms and ensured that, if we continue with this, we must be extremely open and discuss everything. After much back and forth in preparation, we have determined that we want to move forward with this, plan to get together one of these days. We are in a different state. We traveled yesterday to see our pals and see your family. He didn't say anything about doing anything today with said buddies, and I expected today to be quite platonic. Get together at 11.30 p.m. He told me he wanted to do something with her. And very shortly after that, she brought me to the side to inform me that my hubby mentioned that, 
To her, I didn't want to be connected at first, because one, he did not indicate that it was a three-way. Two, I was exhausted, fast ahead after some truth or dare workouts. I got involved and it was fantastic. I went to shower quickly and prepare, while they continued alone. By the time I got back, he got off, and they were waiting for me. We continued, and it was really wonderful. After I got off, he just gazed at us, disregarded our requests for invitations. He just left the house. My friend and I hastily dressed. We raced out to follow, confused. He expressed his feelings of insecurity and jealous, which utterly ruined his mood. Without going into further detail, we begged a buddy to give us room. My husband simply said, he didn't enjoy seeing me in that situation, and that the sex was unfair. It was 2 a.m. at this time, and I didn't want to look. Insane arguing outside. So after some back and forth, I told him we could continue inside. He said that he felt guilty. Once he realized she was going down on me and I was having fun, he kept it inside and didn't say anything. He simply walked out at first. I was trying to understand and attempt to talk about this more until my friend mentioned that they discussed this earlier and that she believed he would be okay. I was quite bewildered. I assumed this was a last minute thing. It turns out he has been sexting her. After a month of discussing this with her, all while telling her that I knew, she was really open and offered me her phone. Showed me all of the texts and messages where she emphasizes that I need to be told. Slash made aware, be good with it. And he always assured her I was okay with it. This is where everything turned to shit. He has been lying to each of us. He has been keeping things concealed. Worst of all, he used the word slash did things. In a way, I am able to simply agree with it. I had an extremely severe and nasty chat with him in front of our buddies that what he did broke all of the guidelines we established. I even learned that he came into her during this. We were fighting until 6 a.m. I honestly do not know if we can come back from this. It's not about sex. It's the lying and shifting blame back to me. He does this often. I am halfway through tearing him a new one. He admitted all his shortcomings and made no excuses. He truly believed that this wasn't going to be problem because I committed to investigate too. He also claimed that the sex was unfair because I felt like I was receiving extra service and not him by the time I became involved. He already was finished. Everything led to him basically acting out. Because I became interested in the sex, he simply wanted me to let him have fun, yet refuses to recognize that I also want to. He left for our home state. I'll be remaining here for another two weeks. I'm not even sure how to feel. And I've been going from sad to enraged to nothing. I apologize if this is not as thorough or if it is untidy. It is lacking a lot. This is the first time I've written a post this long. I can always supply more information and ask inquiries. I understand that this emanated from his insecurity. However, I would like some suggestions on how can I approach him with this? See why he truly thought this would be okay. How do I go with this? What can I do to help him understand? His actions were completely unacceptable. Comments where Op has responded. Commenter 1, I understand. However, if it is supposed to be a threesome, you'd expect her to be like hang for a second. Let's wait for her. She did. She continued inviting me and talking me through my anxiety. We are very close friends and trust one other completely. He continued to reassure her that I knew. So she did not press too hard. Throughout her messages, she always brought me up and I should know. Commenter 2. I understand that. However, if it is supposed to be a threesome, you'd expect her to be like, wait a second. Let's wait for her. Commenter 3, for all we know. He could have lied to her about that too. Oh, do not worry. She wants us to get things started while she prepares. Commenter 2. That is very plausible. But it still seems strange to me. It was planned to be a threesome. Oh, we planned a threesome. However, he went out of his way to request one-on-one. -on -one. Behind my back, I would not have minded at all. If he was at least truthful with me, Skeptical commenter 4. Why hadn't she told you about the messages at all? Within a month if you two are such great friends. Oop, we are all incredibly close buddies. Who have complete trust in one another if she informed me tomorrow that she is a bird. 
I would ask what kind of seeds are your favorite, he kept reassuring her, taking advantage of that trust. Even if this could somehow be solved, I doubt that their friendship with him will remain pristine. Update. I just wanted to share some more information. 1. I advised him to get therapy. I refuse to do anything. Slash speak until he gets some sessions. This way, I can have some time for myself. As well as truly love spending time with pals. With family, he has already signed up for certain programs. And is waiting for an appointment, according to another mutual buddy. I genuinely do not care about sex. I am not emotionally linked to the act itself. Just him. I can go the rest of my life without it. But I absolutely love my hubby. I want to bang with him three times. He had been telling me for weeks that he was on the same page as me. We collect our nut and go. He clearly lied about that, too. 4. My pal didn't even realize he came in. I rejoined, and he stated it. We were both quite astonished. She's on BC and properly cleaned out, as much as humanly possible. 5. I ripped him a new one. I yelled at him incessantly for about four hours. I honestly don't know. If he truly understands what he did, I honestly don't care about the sex or sexting. If he only told me about it six wee pals, and I have 100,000% faith in one another. If he tells them I'm sick, they would not even ask me directly. They would simply start making me soups and teas. He kept reassuring her, and letting her know I was okay. I knew I wasn't. If there is anything else, I will probably update it. Thank you everyone for your responses. We had already discussed this among friends, excluding him, and mentioned most of what was commented below. But this is really pleasant and calming. The ability to see outsiders' opinions that reflect how I'm feeling. I hope you all have a pleasant night day. Comments where the operator has reacted comment, or one, you had a good relationship, then chose to destroy it, by starting a terrific connection. He was an idiot who messed things up in his own manner. The operator is also a moron who made it worse by remaining with the opposite sex partner for another two weeks. This is simply going to damage the relationship further. Leave the friend's place and return to your hubby and resolve the issue with the help of a therapist. Alternatively, go stay with your parents. Rather than remaining with a friend for more sex, trust me, this will only destroy you. You will deeply regret this action and it will be too late to realize it. You may blame your hubby for anything. Take advantage of the blame and do things your way. But by doing that, you are misleading yourself. Best wishes. Oop. I never stayed with them. I am visiting family, and we stopped by to say hello. I only ever wanted to explore that kind of sex with him. He needs to see a therapist before we discuss. Unfortunately, I discovered more. I want to go to the same level he did. 